Hey, I'm Dr. Morales, and in this video, I'm going to talk about chest pain and atrial fibrillation and understand why AFib sometimes can cause chest pain as well and what it really means. Can AFib actually give you a heart attack and how is that actually treated? And so here I'm going to discuss that in this video and make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to talk about ways in which I can help you with your AFib no matter where, where you live. Okay, and so people when they have episodes of AFib, especially when the episodes uh, come and go and they're not in AFib all the time, you may have start off with a nice, steady, natural heart rate, then all of a sudden, shoom, that heart rate just shoots right up and can go up to 120s to 150s, sometimes even as high as 180 or 200 beats per minute, and it can go extremely, extremely fast. And many people will feel that heart rate just going very fast, and, and they just kind of feel it, and it's very uh, bothersome. Uh, but then some people just, they don't feel that necessarily the heart going fast, they just feel like an, an ache or pain inside of their chest and they think that they are actually having a heart attack or, there, or is there something bad happening and so AFib certainly can cause chest pain for a lot of people but what does that really mean and what do you need to know if AFib is actually causing you some chest pain okay and so if AFib is causing you uh, chest pain you know that is usually a really bad sign um, if, if whenever I have some one of my patients who has uh, chest pain associated with their uh, rapid AFib episodes, I usually tell them to um, go to the, to the emergency room to get urgent treatment because that is, having chest pain is certainly a symptom which, which you should try to improve your symptoms as quickly as possible. Now, can AFib actually be giving you a heart attack? Uh, for, and I'm going to explain why that I usually recommend people to go to the ER quickly when I talk about this topic right now. So, can AFib actually cause a heart attack? Now, heart attacks are different uh, how they happen in terms of AFib. AFib is an irregular heartbeat where your heart goes very fast. Heart attacks are usually due to blockages in the arteries of your heart. And so AFib is not going to cause a new or significant or major blockage. Um, but if somebody already has existing blockages of the heart, meaning you've already had some, um, AFib can certainly cause chest pain. And when people come into the hospital when they're having chest pain and AFib, frequently the emergency room is going to do blood tests looking for signs of a heart attack. And in my many years of doing this, I have yet to see a major heart attack that started because of AFib. You can never say never, but I, I just personally have not seen it myself. But I have seen a lot of minor heart attacks. Minor heart attacks with that blood test, where they're looking for signs of a, a heart damage, is elevated. It is higher than what is considered normal. Uh, and, but it's not in that markedly elevated range, which typically happens when somebody's having like a major heart attack. So there's different degrees of abnormality. Well, there can be minor abnormalities, which, which happen with AFib all the time, as well as then major abnormalities when it happens when somebody's having a real ma major heart attack. But minor abnormalities can happen all the time, which means that there is some minor heart damage happening because of the rapid AFib, which is what is frequently causing some types of, of chest pain, which is why I usually refer my patients to go get rapid evaluation and rapid treatment if they're having chest pain with their, uh, with their AFib symptoms, because there can be signs of also a minor uh, heart attack. Usually these minor heart attacks don't cause any permanent damage to the heart muscle or weaken the, the heart muscle. But that's just usually a sign that the AFib by itself can be very uh, uh, da damaging as well. In addition, when somebody's having chest pain associated with their AFib, or if you're in the hospital and they do some blood tests on you and they show signs of a minor heart attack uh, due to AFib, that is usually a sign that there are some underlying blockages of the arteries of your heart, that, which is a completely separate process from AFib, but the risk factors for developing the two are exactly the same. So some of the common risk factors for developing AFib, which include obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, are all risk factors for developing AFib, and they're also the risk factors for developing blockages of the arteries of your heart. Obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, all common risk factors for developing heart blockages as well. And so when somebody has chest pain associated with their AFib, they absolutely need to be checked for blockages of the arteries of the heart because the risk factors between the two are very, very uh, similar. And so checking for blockages of the arteries of the heart can frequently involve things such as a stress test, which is a test which looks at the overall circulation of your heart, which is to make sure there's no signs of any uh, major blockages as well. Also, 
Uh, sometimes if there's signs of a heart attack based on, on the blood test, they may actually do a more invasive test of the uh, blockages to see if there's any signs of blockage of the arteries of your heart, which we will call a cardiac catheterization. Sometimes I'll also call it a cardiac angiogram or a coronary angiogram, where they enter with a needle puncture to the artery of your heart, take a catheter, the, uh, the artery in your leg or in your wrist, uh, and take catheter over to your heart. Use a dye and take pictures of the artery of your heart to see if there's any signs of any major blockage. Okay, and so it is very important to have an assessment performed for coronary artery disease if you have AFib, especially if you're having chest pain for AFib because the risk factor for developing the two are very similar. Now, how do you treat that chest pain associated with AFib? First of all, like I said, if you're having chest pain or if you've had signs of a heart attack because of AFib episodes, absolutely essential for checking you for a block of the arteries of your heart and fixing blockages if needed. Sometimes if there's major blockages that, uh, that are causing chest pain with your AFib, the blockage needs to be fixed. And the, the doctor can use, uh, interventional cardiologist usually opens up that blockage with a metal scaffold called a stent that opens that artery uh, back up again. And that's usually only if there's major uh, blockage in the arteries of your heart. So addressing that blockage and fixing it would be absolutely essential if you're getting chest pain associated with your AFib, especially if there were signs of a, a heart attack during, during an AFib episode. And so assessing and treating those uh, blockages can, can be very essential if you get chest pain associated with, with your AFib. But let's say you get checked out, you, they say that there's no major blockage, there, none of that is a concern, but you get chest pain as with, with your AFib episodes. And so obviously then that turns the treatment strategy a little bit because we've already assessed you for blockages, we know that that is not an issue, then we go switch methods, switch plans and to make sure focus only on AFib as, as itself So that because that can help reduce your episodes of AFib as well as the um, chest pain that comes with it as well. So. Obviously, medications are always an option. Uh, medications can help reduce how many episodes you're having, but they can also reduce the heart rate as well if you get an episode of AFib. And so if you get an episode of AFib, your heart rate may not go 180. It might go 110 beats per minute because of the, the medications uh, that, that they're prescribed by your doctor. So, so that can certainly be a way to minimize that chest pain associated with AFib. Um, common medications would be used would be beta blockers that is most commonly used starting medications um, uh, they are most commonly used ones would be metoprolol, carvedilol, atenolol uh, those would be some of the more commonly ones used um, also calcium channel blockers such as cardizem, deltaizem or verapamil they all can be commonly used uh, to uh, suppress episodes of AFib but also to reduce that heart rate if you get an episode of AFib so that you don't get that chest pain when you get your episode of, of AFib. In addition to antiarrhythmic medications such as flecainide, sotalol, ticosin, or uh, amiodarone, um, they're mostly a little bit stronger than the other ones to prevent the AFib episode. Um, they don't work as well to actually control the heart rate uh, to make sure that heart rate doesn't go too fast. They're usually there to prevent you from going to AFib in the, in the first place. Uh, they do work better than beta blockers or calcium channel blockers to prevent those AFibs from happening, uh, but um, they don't actually control the heart rate a, 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 as well as well. So medications, always an option. Um, however, procedures work as well. Our procedures to try to minimize those episodes of AFib um, uh, ablation, catheter ablation procedure would be the most common one that is used for reducing the amount of episodes of AFib that you're having. In addition, I've had patients who get a catheter ablation for AFib. You know, they may get some minor episodes of AFib afterwards, but the heart rate never goes that fast again, and they don't get that chest pain any, anymore after a, a catheter ablation procedure. So in a catheter ablation procedure, an electrophysiologist like myself would go in through your groin, usually through your femoral vein, take catheters that go up to your heart and make strategic burn marks in the left upper chamber of your heart, which is where most AFibs come from. And that works better than any medication can to reduce uh, or minimize the amount of AFib uh, people have afterwards and reduce how much medications they need as well. In addition, lifestyle modifications are always a treatment for, for AFib episodes as well. Uh, they may not prevent the rate of the, of the heart rate. You may still need some medication, especially if you're having chest pain with them, but they can certainly reduce how many episodes you're having and they can work just as well as, as medications can as well. So lifestyle modification, which should include uh, losing weight, uh, reducing artificial ingredients, removing processed food, cutting out alcohol, reducing added sugar, 
All these things can help reduce how many AFib episodes that you're having. And that's why I created the Take Control of AFib program. The Take Control of AFib program is my own step-by-step -step program where I give you everything that you need from lifestyle modifications that have been clinically shown to improve and reduce the amount of AFib episodes. So right on the link of this video, you'll see a link that will take you over to my program website of Take Control of AFib where you'll get to learn more about the program itself as well as see uh, reviews and testimonials from people who have actually taken the program and see what they have to say about the program itself as well. So if you're interested in natural treatments for AFib and you want to reduce your reliance on, on medications to control those symptoms of AFib, take a look at my Take Control of AFib program. There'll be a link underneath this video. And when this, I'll see you in the next video, and I wish you nothing but the best for your AFib symptoms.